when it really counts. Depend on the source for the latest weather updates, keeping you ahead of the storm. 96.3 FM, 1370 AM, The Source. Hi, I'm Fran Darkington. When I need news, I pass the rest and tune to The Source. W-O-C-A. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 W-O-C-A. Ocala! All right, 25 minutes before 10 o'clock. New music for a new show. We're getting to meet a new show host. His name is William F. Stiles. The show is called Mr. Ocala Real Estate Today. William F. Stiles is a real estate agent and a well-known speaker. He's coming in to the radio station to answer questions and talk about what he does and what he can do for you in the world of real estate. So good morning. Nice to meet you, William. Good to... uh do the show with you. Good, Good morning. morning. How are you? Glad to be here. I am excellent today. You, you, and you're Mr. Ocala. I like that. Yeah, Mr. Ocala. I was born and raised right here in Ocala. Um, went to Lakewood High School. Uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. Go Hurricanes. And um, when I decided to brand myself, you see a lot of uh, real estate. I'm a real estate investor also. Real okay. estate agent and an investor. And a lot of investors think nationally, hey, we're going to invest all over the place. I said, you know what? This is my backyard. This is what, what I know. Right, right. I'm going to brand myself Mr. Ocala. Okay, excellent. And, and so as an investor, does that mean you do more buying and fixing up than you do, uh, like, like, would you help me sell my house or would you be more interested in buying my house? I'm more interested in solving your challenge. <clears throat> my challenge. Okay. okay. Ex- explain what that means. So the way I market myself is I always lead with, with I'm buying houses, I'm an investor, I'm looking to buy. But when I meet a, a seller, a lot of times they just tell me, you know, kind of wh- why they're selling, what their challenge is. And I find that myself buying their house is not going to solve their problem. I'm not going to be able to to give them what they need to really solve their problems. So I say, hey, I'm also a real estate agent. Let me list your house and get it sold. Okay. 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 So do you do you buy houses that are in distress? Yes. Oh, you do. I also buy houses that are not in distress. <laughs> <laughs> well, every once in a while, you'll see an ad either on the side of the road or maybe in a newspaper. Or now, well, nowadays on on the internet, where it says, you know, I buy houses. It doesn't matter what the shape they're in. And so, does that apply to what you do? And it's on the radio now too. And now it's on the radio. <laughs> so this is what I mean. Am I right about this? Or? Yeah, sure. I market. I market. I buy houses. I'm actually changing up my message a little bit because I do feel like when people see that message, they kind of pigeonhole you into a certain way of being. The traditional investor only knows how to steal a house traditional investor only knows how to say hey your house is worth 100 i'll give you fifty thousand dollars right now and there's a certain percentage of people who are in in a desperate situation who will say yes oh okay okay. and you stay away from that yeah obviously i'm i feel like i'm a servant you know i feel like i'm doing god's work out in the world but in a real estate capacity well, that's what people want to hear. Yeah, yeah that's, the, that's the beauty of having you on the radio, by the way, <laughs> is, is because people will get to know you. And that's, that's, to me, the best way to do business is to mm-hmm. just create relationships with potential clients. Yeah, sure. You know, um, you know I, it, real estate is a relationship business. I do think long term. So anybody that I do business with, I think for the rest of their life, I'm going to be their real estate professional. Okay. If they're looking to buy something, sell something, either I'm going to buy their house or I'm going to sell it for them. Um, I, fir- I first started, I'm 39 years old. I was 19 when I bought my first house. Wow. Here in Ocala. Did you that- live in it or were you? I did. Was it an investment? I, I, okay. I bought it originally to live in it. And then and then I met this woman. So this beautiful, <laughs> she she wrote me in, right? And, uh-huh, uh-huh. and uh, so I fell in love, ended up moving in with her. At that time, I had this vacant house. It was just sitting there, so I didn't know what to do. So I ended up renting it out, and um, I got into that's when that was my first foray into real estate. I okay. started as so an you investor. had a little bit of an income, and and, and you found out what it was like to be a landlord. Well, and I just really wasn't happy. I, I thought, what am I supposed to do with my life? I I didn't. I was an excellent employee everywhere I went for about two months. And then I was terrible because I would get bored. So I'm like, what am I supposed to do with myself? And real estate gave me what I needed. It gave me the freedom. I was able to help people. And uh, at some point, uh, probably in my early 20s, I also got my real estate license. So I thought I could help even more people um, from being an investor and a real estate agent. And so since then, I've pretty much... um, so, so give us a little like a, a, a like a sample story of maybe the, the typical client that you would work with 
And, and then we want to open the phone line so we can get some callers to perhaps ask questions. What, sure. Give me a typical client. And the, My typical client is frustrated. Um, my typical client uh, doesn't really know who I am. All they know is the traditional investor who's wanting to steal their house or the traditional real estate agent that just wants to list it, put a sign on it, and, and do no work towards it. And so because of that, they either give their house away or it doesn't sell. And people are in uh, my... Tr- my um, my regular person doesn't want their house to wait, right? So they need to sell it. Mm-hmm. And so listings come up. You know, they sign six-month contracts. I couldn't imagine trying to sell a house for six months. That In my mind, that this doesn't even really? compute. Really? Okay, yeah, it okay. just doesn't even compute. So listings come up after six months, and then I even see people renew for a second six months. And, and when they finally contact me, I'm like, man, I am so sorry. I mean, if the agent had gotten real with them, in the beginning right and and did everything that was necessary to sell their house they could have saved them a lot of time energy money and and hassle and stress really so that's my my typical person is someone who's just frustrated are they typically selling their house because they need to uh, for money reasons because they need to move what is what are their circumstances this okay so this is really close really uh dear to my heart because this when i meet somebody i really drive into why are you selling what's going on here okay and i find a lot of different reasons for example a seller may say hey i want to travel the world i want to buy an rv and just travel i don't have to sell my house is paid off i'm i'm happy here but my 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 heart my spirit is saying let's get an rv and travel so that's why they need to sell Uh and so if a year goes by and we're never guaranteed tomorrow so if a year goes by and they don't sell their house, that's another year wasted that they're, that they're not living their dream. That's true. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So there's there's that dream aspect. Um, I just recently bought two houses from a woman, and um, she was living in a mobile home. And so it was her dream to get out of this mobile home and go and get into a house in a retirement community. Okay, that was her right, dream. She yeah, wanted yeah. The, to be in an active community. And so she had been trying to sell her house for over a year, and I came along, and I actually uh, bought two properties from her, and she was able to move on and do that. So a lot of times it's – sometimes it's money-related, but sometimes it's dream-related. So do you simply buy the house instead of selling it for them? Or I'm still confused as how you help them out. How how are you able to sell a house quicker than the person with the six-month contract? (laughs) Okay. So I'm going to talk about – I'm going to talk from the point of view as a real estate agent. A lot of times, sellers have what I call magical thinking. Okay, they uh, they think, "Hey, I paid a hundred thousand dollars for it. I put twenty thousand dollars into it. Right, right. You know, this is a really nice house. I should be able to sell it for a hundred and twenty. But what they don't realize is the buyer. So if I have a buyer and I'm coming to look at your house, my buyer does not care how much you paid for it. My buyer doesn't care." Um, how much money you put into it. All they care about is your house and price compared to all the other uh, neighboring properties that are similar to yours. Okay. Okay? So the first thing you, first thing you've got to do is, is kind of come to reality on what your house is really worth and what it can sell for versus kind of what you want out of the property. And so that's one of the first things I do is say, Hey, are you just wanting to put it on the, on the market and just whatever? You, you know, uh, um, then yeah, you can price it at whatever. It's not going to sell. But if you want to get real, you you do the research. Well, they don't do the. Re- I do the research, and I say, hey, I can sell it in, in six months. It's pretty much you set it for this price. But if you want to sell it in two months, let's get real, and and this is where you need to be price wise and um, how the property looks. It's got to have a great presentation. Wow, it must be exciting work that you do. I, I want to uh, put the phone number out there. Are you okay with taking a phone call? Absolutely. First show, Let's so go. we're going we're gonna, to uh, try this. The, the number is 622-9622. Uh, William F. Stiles is here. It's a new show on WOCA. He calls the show Mr. Ocala Real Estate Today. Uh, he is a real estate agent, a real estate investor, uh, and there's so many more questions that we have, but I want to let the listeners ask the, uh, the questions, uh, at least part in part. The number is 622 it looks like you've got one, William. By, by the way, if you're talking and a call comes in, mm-hmm. I will do this, a little hand signal. Okay. And it doesn't mean wrap it up real quick. It just means somebody's waiting. Okay. Take you know, get your whole. Make sure you don't stop short of giving okay. your answer. And then yeah, I forgot to tell you off the air the, our little hand signal here. <laughs> and you do have somebody calling. So, and if you do this, what does this mean? 
I, no. I won't ever do that. I won't do that. <laughs> I won't do that. All right, well, here we go. Uh, good morning. Thank you for calling. You're you're on the air with William F. Styles. Yes, thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. Uh, I have family members and friends that, like, w- l- when they sold automobiles to somebody, maybe in the family or to anybody else, uh, let, let's say they got two thousand dollars for the automobile, but on the receipt. They put down three hundred dollars, so the person that bought the car has, doesn't have to pay as much taxes. Is that kind of finagling going on in your in your line of work? No, actually, it's not. Um, I understand what you're saying. I, I know that in automobiles, people do that all the time. They pay two thousand dollars, but for savings of financial uh, taxes, they write three hundred dollars. But I wouldn't know how you could do that in a real estate transaction. It's it's really contracts are what they are, prices are what they are. Um, I'm not sure how how you would be able to do that. Okay, so you couldn't fudge the paperwork. Is sounds like what he's asking, right? Okay, he's not, I think he's not there anymore. Okay. Uh, the, the phone number is 622-9622 if you'd like to call in. And, uh, wow, this is you, you have kind of a different approach, I think, from other real estate agents that we've had on yeah, the air. Yeah, I'm not the traditional guy. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm really different. Um, I lead with my heart. I try, to, I try to help people as best as I can. And once I meet them, I find out the best way I can, I can help them. Now, in, in the notes, it says that the, the, buy, the seller makes the, sets the price. Yeah. But but if I don't have a clue what price it should be, I mean, don't you guide me? Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm going to tell you where the price needs to be. Yeah. Okay. But when I say the seller sets the price, I'm going to give them various prices, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to let them pick which one. And so, but I'm going to tell you if you want to sell the house in the next thirty to sixty days, this is where it needs to be. If, Absolutely. If somebody builds a really expensive house in a subdivision, sure more expensive than the other homes in that subdivision. Does it increase the prices of the other homes, or does does that expensive house suddenly not become as valuable as... I mean, it's not going to hurt. I mean, it's, it's certainly going to help. You know, I mean, wouldn't you like to live next to a ho- your neighbor, have this big, beautiful house? Absolutely. <laughs> um, but at the same time, what really drives... Uh, there's a, actually a lot of variables that drive prices of, of real estate. But the primarily, it's sales, Okay. And, and when you're looking at, at value, what am I going to sell my house for? You've got what has closed in the past, say, three to six months that's similar to yours, that's uh, close by. Um, you're going to look at what's pending, meaning what has just been put under contract. And then you're also going to look at what's available for sale. A lot of times people focus on what's available uh, for sale. Hey, this guy's asking 200000 But the problem is you can ask whatever you want. That really is not... A, a strong determination of, of value, right? So what you want to look at is the other houses that are just like that uh-huh. one that have just sold over the past three to six months for say 170. That's going to give you a much better uh, idea of what the value is. So I would say that 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 beautiful home that's built once it sells and there's a a price what somebody has been willing to write a check for. Okay, you can ask anything you want, but when someone's willing to write a check for a house that price then kind of sets the market for that house. And if yours is similar or if it's a little bit less in certain ways, um, appraisers can certainly do a, a few deductions to kind of come up with a good value for yourself. But sales is what drives values. So when you have a house for sale, do you list them someplace? Can we look at, is there a website for you that we can go to? Yeah, well, th- there's the MLS is uh, where I put my houses for listing. Okay, okay. Um, other, my other homes, I do not actually. You know what I really do to sell the homes that I buy is I just place signs out on the property and, and get them sold that way. And pe- just people driving by? Yeah, here's, okay. Do you have any? When, you you're selling, p- when you're selling a house, you always have a lot more people interested in buying it than you can have move in. Only one person can move in. It makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, when I'm selling a house, I may have 25 people call me. And I already know that roughly 22, 23 are no good. They'll never be able to buy this house. Okay, you take the call, you go through all the motions, they'll never be able to buy it. They don't have the money, the credit, or, or, or whatever. So those people, I, you just kind of process them out. But you always have the two to three that are good quality buyers okay and the, but only one of them can move into the house mm-hmm. so my business strategy has been to to get all of the contact information of the other two and stay with them and i create what is called a buyer's list and so once you have a buyer's list and you've sold multiple houses it becomes pretty extensive and you know what they're looking for you know what area etc cetera, etc cetera. when i get a new house that i've personally bought i mark it to my buyer's list and i place out signs Oh, okay. Get it sold okay. That way. Okay. So, so you have a list. Do you, uh, on your notes, it indicates you have a deal of the week. Do you want to tell us about that? Is that a home? 
So. Yeah, this is actually a listing of mine. So I just wanted to uh, give, them, give them a shout. Yeah, deal of the week. The address is 8012 Southwest 100th Lane Road here in Ocala. But here's what's really nice about this house. It's over in Kingsland Country Estates. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Out on 200. It's a, it's a really nice area. And it's a, it's a half acre. So when you're on this lot, there's just so much room there. Uh, it's a three-bedroom, two-bath, over 2,000 uh, square feet and it's priced to sell. Um, the the uh, square foot price on that's only $51 a square foot, and you, you can't touch it. In, in that neighborhood, you cannot touch $51 a square foot, so this house is definitely a deal. Oh, I'm looking at it. See, with computer technology, I went right to it. I found the address, and uh, boy, it's a nice looking place. And if you uh, if anybody is interested in seeing it, you can uh, reach me. My, my office number is 352-282-3080. 352-282-3080. Uh, just let them know that you are calling about the house that I mentioned on the radio. All right. And and do you help people once you have the buyer and the buyer says, okay, I'm going to buy this, mm -hmm. then you come up with all of the documentation and all, all of the doc stamps and what they need for insurance and things like that. The you buyer? help Yeah. Yes. You, you help them through that process. Okay. You got to, for me, I take my client as if they're like my mom, okay? Mm -hmm. Or they're like, I always think of it about myself. So when they are going through a process, I literally hold their hand through the whole process. And then, and then I take it on as if I'm the person buying the house. So for example, if they get a quote, whether it's from an insurance or closing fees or something like that, I look at it and, and, and I really... Um, negotiate and say hey this doesn't make sense for me you you really should get a better pricing than this oh wonderful so let's say somebody's listening right now and they have uh, a contract with an agent and they've got that six month contract mm -hmm. you were just talking about can they still work with you or do they have to wait for that contract to run out no here okay i get calls all the time from people who are listed with an agent and they call me they say hey i want to i i want to work with you I say, listen, you agree to sign a contract with that agent. Okay. Okay. Give them a chance to do their job, right? And so, but if they don't do their job and they don't live up to their contract, they said they could sell it in six months, then absolutely contact me. And uh, what I'll usually do is get a date of when the listing is up uh -huh. and, and then follow up with them at that time because absolutely I can help them, but not until that contract is up. Yeah, well, that, that, that's only fair. So, so somebody who's listening who has that contract, let's say it's, it runs out today. They can call you today. Call me right yeah. now. <laughs> call, call you. And, and what would you ask them first off? What, what, what took place during the last six months? What, why didn't it sell? I, you know what? I would say, number one, why are you selling? I really want to get to know them and why they're selling. Number two, it hasn't sold in six months. Have you gotten any feedback? Hmm. Why hasn't it sold the last six months? And what is typically the reason? What, what do you normally find is the reason? Typically, they say, I don't know. I didn't get any feedback. Okay, I asked them what kind of feedback did they not get. So they don't know, but do you know? Do you generally, can you look at how much they were asking? And, and Once I do my research, I know. Okay. Yeah, once I've done my research, I'm like, yeah, no wonder it didn't sell. Um, you know, you're asking 100000 and really the, the market on that house might okay. be eighty five. Uh, or, you know, uh, it just, the presentation is horrible. I mean, no one wants to walk into a house and it smell like, you know, cat urine. Oh, yeah. No, unless okay. you're another yeah. cat. Yeah. <laughs> so even, uh, you've got to understand, if, you're, if your house is not presentable, it's going to drive down the price. I don't care if, the, if it's, all it costs would be $300 to, to do some cleanup. In the buyer's mind, they're going to deduct $3,000, sure. $4,000 sure. yeah, yeah. on something that might only cost $300. If you need, say, a toilet repaired, and it's a $300 fix, in a buyer's mind, it's a $3,000 problem. So, and mm -hmm. and it's, that's the way it happens that way all the time. Absolutely. So that so you really act as um, a counselor in a way for selling houses. So sure. Somebody who's well, having a hard time selling needs a counselor. Well, I am I am a speaker. Um, I I have spoken at churches here in town about the power of feeling good, and I spoke out at CFCC um, about embracing the challenges of your dream. So speaking and and being a, like a coach is something that I do. And so because of that, I really connect with my clients, yeah, yeah. whether well, sellers and buyers. So yeah, absolutely. I take it on as my own. I, w I would imagine that one of the biggest problems is that we, the general public, are, you know, understandably ignorant. I mean, we live in houses, 
just like we drive cars. I don't necessarily know how to fix a car. I don't necessarily know how to sell a house or what. You know, that's why we go to professionals like yourself. Okay, absolutely. And this is something that I say this all the time to somebody. I go, what do you do for a living? They're like, yeah, I, I work on cars. I say, listen, if I heard a sound in my car, I wouldn't know what to do. I know nothing about cars. I know nothing about 99% of the things in the world. But I know a lot about real estate. And I know a lot about Ocala, and I know a lot about Marion County. And when it comes to that, I'm an expert. And so you are an expert on cars. Allow me to be the expert on real estate. And as long as as long as they'll do that, I mean, we can make a successful transaction for sure. And you have a versatility in your clientele because some people have families; they want to be by schools. Some people are retired; they want to be in gated communities. So you're able to run the gamut and help them all. Yes, but here's my limitations: I don't want to go outside Marion County. Mm -hmm. People call me all the time. Hey, what about Gainesville? What about? Uh, you know, Leesburg or Tampa. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm Ocala, Ocala, Marion County, because in my mind, I know this market, and I, I just know. Mm -hmm. I know, I know the pricing. I know um, the market very well, so, which helps me be able to buy and sell. So really, beyond that, as long as it's in Marion County, and I don't know anything about commercial. I am not a commercial guy, but when mm -hmm. it comes to residential real estate here in Ocala, I'm the guy. I feel like I'm the best, to be honest with you. So talk to the person who wants to buy. Is, the, is that person going to work with you in the same way that the person who is selling would work with you? Sure, sure. But here's the thing. Um, if you're looking to buy, you've got to have one, or, one of two things. You've either, either got to have money to put down on a uh, owner financing property. And I do sell properties, owner financing, lease options, and things like that. So as long as you've got money down, you don't have to necessarily have the credit, per se, but I can get you into a house, okay? And when I say money down, I'm talking about probably 5000 minimum, okay, as a down payment. Or you need to be able to get qualified for a loan. So when you contact me, I'm going to find out which situation do you fall into, do you, are you credit challenged, but you have money to put down, or can you get qualified for a house? If you can, I, I am the best at finding the best deals in town and negotiating on your behalf. And so that's what I do. I really pride myself on negotiating on buyers' behalves because, you know, I feel like a lot of times that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Well, your speaking skills are obvious. I mean, you're doing a great radio show, first time out, and, and li you. listen to you. Uh, <laughs> Mr. O'Calla, Real Estate Today. Uh, where do we go? Is your website Mr. Ocala Buys Houses? Yes, I lead with uh, with my uh, home buying operation. I am a real estate agent with Ocala Realty World here in Ocala, which is the best uh, firm in town, I believe, because of their heart and soul. Um, but my business is called Mr. Ocala Buys Houses, and my website is Mr. Ocala Buys houses.com okay and i just went there and uh i can put on the on the streaming screen uh that information if you want to see it right there mr ocala buys houses.com is the website so so from the website i guess we can introduce ourselves to you that way and perhaps call you um is it ever what's your recommendation as to when to call like how do we know if it's too soon is it too soon to call i guess no, no. never too soon right now call right now <laughs> right now. No, seriously, I, I am being serious. There is, you cannot call too soon. Just call me, and I will have like an exploratory session, and I can just talk to you, and I will just give you my honest opinion on what you should do. Are there any houses you don't want to sell or don't want to buy? Mobile homes, for example? Modular I love, homes? I love mobile homes. <clears throat> okay, uh, it's all, it all, You know, I buy mobile homes. I buy homes um, that are not mobile homes. I buy homes that uh, need a lot of repairs and uh -huh. some that don't need any repairs. Uh, the only difference is how I buy them and how the deal is structured. Mobile homes are a challenge in the fact that it's really hard to get financing on mobile homes. Okay, mm -hmm. so that creates <clears throat> a whole new element. And so what a lot of people do is they, they try to list their, their mobile home for cash and full price. When a bank won't finance it, it'll never happen. Right. And uh, are you an advocate of open houses? Yes and no. I love open houses but I don't like to do them myself. Mm -hmm. So that's up to the homeowner then, if they want to do it. No, if I'm selling house. their house, I'm going to get their house sold. Uh -huh. Okay, that's going to happen. <laughs> you know, in my mind, and I can't even imagine having something for six months. I sell their house. <laughs> now, if I have to do an open house, so be it. How long uh, does it normally take you to sell a house? I would say within two months. Two months? Wow. wow. Amazing. Wow, that's very good. But now... I just want I want to be clear I want to clarify this part of what I do when I'm dealing with the seller is I find out what they're looking for and what they're looking to do. So if they're wanting to go to a longer term plan, I can work with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
but I really I like to deal with people that that need my help you know I, I talk to people all the time that they're just like they, they already know everything and they don't need me I'm not even sure why they called me <laughs> but um, and I just don't think their house will ever sell so those people I don't mm. I, I don't deal with well, you, you obviously know your stuff. William F. Styles. thank you for doing this. And uh, for the listeners, we'll give you the number in just a second. Mr. Ocala, Real Estate Today, what is your phone number? Okay, you can reach me at 352-282-3080. That's 352-282-3080. All right. Share this video. This video is good information. Somebody can benefit from it. We'll be right back. This is WOCA Ocala. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. A vote in the UK to leave the European Union rattling markets on Wall Street and around the world. The Dow dropping some 500 points in early trading and some are breaking.